How's everybody doing? <laughs> Ashley's good. I am not fresh off. This just feels, is it seriously loud or normal loud? It's, okay. It's weird being back. I am not freshly off, but off of quarantine. I feel like, thank you. My whole family got the uh, Rona, and it really wasn't that bad. I'm not trying to make light of it. I know a lot of people have had some awful experiences, but I, I feel like we see all the terrible stories, and it might be nice to just hear a regular one. Um, we felt like we had a cold for a couple days. I did lose my sense of smell, which thankfully has returned. And our whole family watched all of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And no, what else did we, we did watch those. We watched the Narnia movies, which I highly recommend. I haven't seen them in a few years. And the first one had me tear up like two or three times when they start meeting Aslan. Anybody else love Narnia or is it just me? My favorite scene from the first one is um, Peter, the oldest brother. He's the one that gets the sword and the shield from Santa in the movie. And he has this run in with a wolf and the wolf is kind of mocking him and telling him, you know, you're not enough, you can't do it. You should put the sword away. And uh, they get out of that encounter. And then later in the movie, the wolf shows back up and Peter runs over to protect his two sisters who are getting attacked by this wolf. And um, Aslan and all these warriors run over and Aslan, you know, slams his paw on one of the wolves with, you know, with no, there's no fight, there's no conflict, there's no, um, there's no question on who is dominating, right? As Aslan crushes this wolf, but there's two, there's another wolf that's free. And the warriors run up to help Peter and Aslan says, no, 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 leave him alone. This battle is his. And Aslan and all these warriors watch as Peter kills his first wolf with his new sword, which I just, I love it. I was like screaming, cheering in my living room watching it. And uh, it's just a cool picture to me of how Jesus uh, leads us all in victory, but teaches us who we are in the process. So it seems like everybody's in here and I'm done telling Narnia stories. I've heard like five or six people say they're real tired this morning, so why don't we all stand up and just shake it off. I, uh, yeah, you get an extra hour and realize you didn't actually need it. Wow. I want to welcome you if this is your first time to the well. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your peace that's already here. I want to invite you to say you're free to worship how you'd like. If you'd like to come forward, you're welcome to do that if you want to stay where you are. Uh, but this morning, I, I really do believe that there are encounters that God has prepared for eternity for us, things that he's looked forward to speaking to our hearts. And so, Father, we, we just say thank you. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for washing us clean. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for mercy. Jesus, thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit your comforter, our comforter. Amen. Let's worship. I can feel redemption. And I can feel redemption. 
redemption on the wind Forgiveness like the tide rolling in Taking up the space where shame has lived Receiving all that you died to give Let the wind blow let the tide roll to the earth knows your God of love and my troubles sing a new song of the glory to the God of love
God of love Oh let this nation Sing a new song Of the glory To the God of love Of the glory To the God buggy come on up how many of you love the testimonies these last few weeks you guys remember last week's <laughs> well buggy had something awesome happen and uh so why don't you go ahead i'm gonna keep this just to keep it clean for you but why don't we why don't you tell people what life was like what was the problem i uh, woke up last sunday with uh Severe back pain. Uh, it's probably a scale to one to ten, about a five. And I got to church, started worshiping, and it started hurting worse. And so I'm standing, I'm like, I can't sit down. This is amazing worship. I don't want to sit down. So I'm fighting it. Was this something that just happened Sunday, or was it an ongoing issue? It's been going ongoing for a while. My job is very physical. I put in uh, street signs. How long? 27 years. The, the problem, or... How long is the problem? Uh, off and on. So. And then what happened? I was worshiping and I was trying to, as I was worshiping, it started getting worse. And from a one to 10, it went from a, probably a five to an eight. So I'm, I had to sit down for the last part. And as uh, I'm sitting there thinking of all the things I'm not gonna be able to do because my back is hurting so bad, Pastor Kathy called everybody up I'm sorry, I didn't call everybody up, but she said, uh, I feel like there's some uh, neck pain. Is there anybody with neck pain in here? And I'm like, Ooh. I was like this, about to raise my hand. I'm like, no, it's my back. I can't, I can't. I don't want to steal. I don't want to steal the, bless, the blessing for someone else. And so people raised their hand, and there was a young lady in the corner here that was the dancers. And so I was stretched, as I stretched my hand out to her, she said, I feel like there's going to be a pop. And as soon as she said pop, my back literally popped and I felt I felt like just the pain was gone I, I mean, I, I, it was it was gone hundred percent gone from an eight to zero eight to zero and I've been at work all week last week and I've just been able to do everything I want to do I, I did my lawn I did everything it was it was amazing so hallelujah yes Wow. Can we pray? Who's got any pain in your back or neck? If you're by these people with their hands raised, leave your hand, leave your hand up until somebody comes to you. Go ahead and put your hand on their shoulder. And just do, do what Christians do. something that we don't want you to hurt yourself but do something that you couldn't do or see how you're feeling and as soon as you know you've got 80 percent or better raise your hand come on one two thank you jesus hey thank you lord Go ahead, if you if you felt breakthrough, put your hand up again. Two. Did you? That's amazing. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. God, I pray that your miracle working hand in our life would remain fresh. 
God, that there would be a, a, a renewed awe and wonder this morning released in my own heart, in this family. Jesus, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for Buggy. Thank you for the, the more this morning, God. Thank you for babies being restored. Thank you for the eyesight that's been restored. God, thank you for your hand that's in our midst, for the witness that you are alive and with us, Jesus. Let's just keep worshiping him because he's worth it. Amen.
It causes despair. Fear doesn't look at your future. It only looks at your past. Fear wants to redefine who you are. But faith in God and how much he loves you and values you, regardless regardless of what you've ever done, regardless of what's being done to you. His goodness is greater than all fear. Now keep your hands back up. It's okay. I've been there many, many, many times. Can you guys lay hands on them, please? Because we're going to break off a spirit of fear because we've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound and well-balanced mind. So I declare right now in Jesus' mighty name that every spirit of fear that has been gripping your body right now is being broken in the name of Jesus. I declare that faith will raise up right now in Jesus' name. A faith that will sustain you. It will not be a faith that you're going to feel in a moment. It's not an emotion. It's not based on service. It's not based on your worship during on a Sunday. It's something that will be lasting with you on Monday through Sunday because you're going to stay hooked up with the one that has the faith to release to you. He gives you the measure of faith that you have need of. So I break that off right now in Jesus' name. I also believe that there's a generational curse that has come to somebody in here and that fear has been in your bloodline for many years and it's been discouragement, it's been hopelessness, it's, it, 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 it's felt as though you cannot ever, 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 ever Ever be one of those people that your head can stay out of the water but I declare today that that generational curse is broken off of your life in Jesus mighty name in Jesus name come on give him praise 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 give him praise, give him praise. father we thank you we thank you for your goodness 
we thank you that you're a good good daddy and you care for your children and so as we continue to worship you may that revelation of your secure love go deeper and deeper and deeper into our hearts amen amen
so busy, everything's moving so fast. Let's just take a moment. Rest in his faithfulness.
forward to the next song, I just want to um, do communion, but I know there's a lot of people up front that you don't have your communion with you at the moment, so I think during this next song, let's just do it throughout the song. If you feel like you want to go back to your chair and grab your communion and come back to your place, I want to keep the atmosphere that is right here, but I just feel like I just keep being reminded of Psalm 23 when it says, you have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And I feel like this cup and bread is a symbol of that, that he's set a table before us in the presence of, the, of our enemies, that it's a, a symbol of his love for us. It's a symbol of his power that has broken through the darkness, that has conquered every power of darkness and that it's a symbol before us that we can come in his presence, that we have a table set before us anytime, anytime, any circumstance that we're going through, that there's a table set before us and it's the table of his presence and he is with us. And this next song that we're gonna be singing in the second verse, it says, there's a table just for you and me, break the bread and pour the wine. And as we sing this, I just, want to give freedom for every person to take communion and to just receive that invitation to go deep with God, receive that invitation to come near to his heart, to sit at the table of his presence, to be in the midst of his presence, even no matter what is going on around us, there may be chaos or whatever else may be coming against us, but we have peace, we have his presence that is always with us. And, um, so as we do this, as we sing this song and just worship and, and come in intimacy with him, that you can feel free to take communion as we do that. Take the bread and take the cup that represent the body and blood of Jesus.
faithful and steady to the end we would be found faithful and steady to the end that we would be found faithful and steady to the end it doesn't matter how you begin it's how you cross that finish line we'll be faithful to the end I feel a challenge coming out right now that as God is pouring down his blessing upon you in, the, in, the, in those places of your heart, in my heart, that feel as though it's so, it's so dry, he says, 
it's not so much how you begin will you be found faithful and steady to the end this is the journey this isn't the 50 yard dash this is a cross country run and there's times that you're going to need more water than you're going to need at other times. It's important to understand the times and the seasons of your life personally and the times and seasons of what God is doing corporately throughout the world and throughout the earth, not just this nation. We're on a journey. So though I'm grateful for the blessing of refreshing. There will be times when you will have to drink of the cup yourself. Father, I thank you for your goodness. That we are a people that will be steadfast to the end. Being found faithful. You never called us to be successful. You called us to be faithful. And may it be known that you are always faithful. So we just take this moment to say thank you. Thank you. Come on, can you shout out a thank you? Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, give him a big shout. Thank you, God. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness and your steadfastness at all times. You never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he changes not. And we're grateful to you, God, that you are steady. You are always steady. You are always faithful. Amen? Amen. One more shout. guys give the worship team a thank you I, um, I don't take it lightly what you guys do here thanks <laughs> I'm just super grateful my name is Max I'm gonna lead us in the offering and uh, I feel like I have a little piece of the puzzle to share. I had a dream last night. Why don't we do this? There's a text to give number that'll pop up. And then there are baskets up front that our ushers will release you a row at a time so we can honor social distancing. Um, but I had a dream last night that I feel like fits with what God's doing. And in the dream, does anybody know Torch Lake near Traverse City? So that's where I'm from originally is the Traverse City area. And Torch Lake is a lake that I almost died on as a human running away from God and just doing what sinners do. And it's also the lake that I was baptized in after I met Jesus. And in this dream, I was with um, people from a previous season of my life, older relationships, and we were, um, this isn't real in the natural, but in the dream, there was this private beach area that uh, you could kind of hike, you know, in and under trees and nobody really knew where it was, but you could hike to get to this secret place. And it was very secluded and, you know, private and pretty and all that. So in the dream, we're going, we're trying to go back to this secret place that I knew about. But when we get there, it's, the landscape is completely different. There's no hidden trail it's like a big clear-cut lawn with um, perfect grass and you know just was easy to get to and it was heavily populated there's people everywhere so instead of it being private and secluded there's just all these other people there and I woke up from the dream and I felt like the Lord said something like um, you're in familiar places 
uh, and you need to lean not on your own understanding in this season. And in worship today, I was reminded of that Jesus said, man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, these current words of God. And I feel like there is such an emphasis right now to hear what he is saying right now. And how many of you would say you're in a familiar place? You're going through something in life, you've been there before, it feels like you've gone around that mountain. Okay, so that's a decent amount. I, I, if it's for, I, I, we believed, I shared it um, with Apostle Kathy because I believe it's a, a corporate word. But I wanna encourage you this morning to put your confidence in his ability to speak, not in your ability to hear. Sometimes we end up trying really hard to hear what God is saying. And I've done it where I, I feel so desperate for him that it's almost like I try to effort myself into an encounter or something. And I really feel like he's saying, trust his ability to speak. He says, my sheep know my voice and they won't listen to another. And so I just want to agree with the peace that I felt all through worship. I feel like it's, uh, it's just what he's doing right now. So Jesus, thank you for that. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for our, our confidence that you will never leave us or forsake us. That even in familiar places, we can lean not on our own understanding, on our own history with you, but we can trust that you have a right now word. You have wisdom of, from another age. You know what you're doing in this season that we're in. And God, I thank you. You said anyone that lacks wisdom, let them ask. And so I just ask for this house, for a, for a deposit of heavenly wisdom that we would all navigate with integrity and clarity and peace all the circumstances of life and the weirdness of 2020 Jesus thank you for being our rock thank you for your steadfastness I want to encourage you to give in that light um, there's nothing that I know more than to keep my finances sowed into the kingdom to keep me tied to his purposes in the earth to be honest with you it keeps my heart in the right place so i want to encourage you you guys are released to give good morning everybody before we start service and announcements and all that fun stuff i'd like to call up apostle kathy and pastor matthew wherever he's disappeared to he's gone he's mia and our worship pastor rachel and all of the VSDs. If you're in here, please come up. VSDs, VSDs. <laughs> As many of you probably know, um, I know it's November 1st right now, but October was Pastor Appreciation Month, and we just want to close off October right, and we want to give our appreciation to these amazing people. Here's Matthew. There we go. Hello. Welcome, Hello. Pastor Matthew. Woo! <laughs> we just want to bless our pastors so much. Um, the roles that they are in are truly the most selfless roles you could ever be in. And they are... <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> they can be really, really tolling and um, draining and, and honestly really exhausting and just a lot to deal with. And these three people up here have the purest hearts that I've ever seen in my entire life. And they are so incredibly amazing. And I think we're all so blessed to have them as our leaders and as our pastors. This entire church started right here. And it's only growing and going so much farther because of these people that started the foundation of this church. And we are so thankful for you. changed so many lives. You've helped bring restoration and healing. And you've sent people on their way to grow into a deeper love with the Lord. And we are so thankful. And we have, um, well, first we're, uh, we're going to lay hands on you and pray over you. So if we can all come together and lay hands on our fearless leaders. <laughs> 
So, Father God, thank you so much for uh, the leaders that you put before us, God, and all the things that they've gone through that's brought them to this spot right here uh, before us, Lord. And I know it's not always been an easy road, and it's, this hasn't been a position to be called easy. You know, it's been called to be challenging, and uh, you've definitely put the right people in this spot to build up this house for you, Lord Jesus, and we are just so thankful. And uh, this morning, uh, Pastor Matthew, I actually had a word for you. I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning, um, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and um, I got a word, just a single word. I've, I didn't hear it, but I read it, and it was just A-G-I-T-E, like a jite, a gite. I have no idea. So I Googled it, and um, it's actually a French word for agitated. And, um, and I just looked up, like, the other meanings of it through, like, the French translation, and it's restless, excited, turbulent, disturbed, moved, uneasy, nervous. And I was like, that's not the best word. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, so I asked God, I'm like, well, why is that significant? And uh, what I got was that that's something that maybe you've been overwhelmed with and have been feeling. And... Um, I feel like the Lord is bringing you through this season of maybe feeling some of those things, and he doesn't want you to see them as a burden. He wants you to see them as stepping stone feelings that's getting you to the place that you need to be, and it's deepening your roots as a leader, as a father, as a pastor, as a business owner. Um, it's just, it's just going to bring you farther, and um, so those feelings are going to pass, but in the meantime, if they're not gone, don't, don't grow bitter about them. <laughs> Let them be what they are and know that it's taking you somewhere so much more deeper and so much more important. Pastor Kathy, I have a word for you. Um, this morning, as I was asking the Lord if he had anything, I just had this really deep sense that he loves your secret place so much. And during worship, I saw a picture of you sitting on a blanket with Jesus in a beautiful garden. And you were leaning into him, and I won't sing it, but I heard the words to the Misty Edwards song, favorite one, and you said, Jesus, here I am, your favorite one. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? I have to know. And he looked at you and gazed at you lovingly and said, I'm here, and I am, you are my favorite one, and I love you so much. And he said, what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and what I know is that we're going to go that way. We're going to go that way. And I will be with you, and I will be right next to you, and I will be walking with you through every step we take. And Rachel, when I was praying, I got this for you. Um, I felt that the Lord said, you may be gentle, but your love is violent, and your kindness is fierce. And the Lord calls you a faithful friend. Your voice is like a river flowing in the desert, bringing life, healing, and refreshing to barren and dry places. And it is, it is his glory to give you the desires of your heart because you've made him um, the delight of your life. And then I just have a prayer that he gave me to pray over you too. Lord, I just pray that you would increase her capacity and broaden her path so that your life would be poured out in a greater measure through her. Let your presence rest upon her with a fresh anointing and may your love flow from her to revive broken hearts. May she always live from the de deepest depths of your spirit until the deserts around her become oceans. And Rachel, um, wow, this year has been a significant year its significance isn't even going to be fully realized um, for months to come. Sometime in 2021, you're going to be able to look back on this year and see the, the promotion that God has given you, the depths and the seeds that have been planted over the years that you have been so faithful to water, the gifts and the talents that you've been given are going to expand and explode beyond the dreams that God has given you. This is your season. If you have any doubt, this is your season to step up, to step out. There are more songs in you that need to be released, that need to be written, that need to be proclaimed. And I'm super excited for this coming year. I am so blessed to call you friend. I am just very excited for what God has for you. Your ordination um, did something in the spirit that we're, we're going to reap the fruit of in the harvest um, for the months and years to come. And I just 
bless you in Jesus' name. Apostle Kathy, um, the definition of appreciate is to recognize uh, value and um, to, to honor that. I had to Google it. And um, there's even to like think about what life would be like with, if you weren't there. And uh, so I've just spent the last like 20 minutes going through line by line of um, moments where I don't know if I'd make it. If you hadn't been there in my life, it, it's amazing, even not even through conversation, but just presence. And so I want to I want to bless you with the knowledge that God does amazing things through your ministry. And Holy Spirit, we ask for an increase of your peace in your presence on her life. We thank you for her choices for her steadfastness, for always putting your spirit first, especially when it wasn't easy, for guiding a group of people, us, specifically in the most direct route to your heart, God. Thank you for not giving us a leader that lets us wander in a desert but that you've given us a leader that believes that overcoming, that the giants have nothing on us, that you've given us a leader that says it is good land and we can go right in. Thank you for giving us a leader that acknowledges the challenges and never backs down. And Holy Spirit, we ask for an increase in strength. I see you getting taller. I see us rising up. That the, the giants don't look as big because we're also getting bigger is what I'm seeing right now. And as we enter into pro the promised land, I just feel like it's where you're taking us in. We're not waiting for heaven to come. We're, we're, we're bringing it to earth. And God, I ask that you'd give her increase in peace, clarity, wisdom, that you'd answer the cries of her heart, that you'd meet her in that secret place as your favorite one, God. And we thank you for everything, every detail that she does that we don't, I know I don't always say thank you for, God. This is just a moment where I'm feeling like we're all saying thank you, that we feel it. I, I know we all feel it, but right now it's just a chance to say we thank you, we appreciate you, and we love you. In Jesus' name. Pastor Matthew, uh, as I was praying for you uh, during, uh, during worship, uh, and I know it's not just for you as, because it echoes the word that uh, Apostle Kathy gave and Ashley and Max. And it was, uh, it was two things. The first one is that Jesus, after he was baptized and coming up out of the water, was immediately led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. Now that sounds horrible, but it, the word that I heard echoes uh, what Apostle Kathy gave. And that is, it wasn't the way that he went out. That's the focus. It was the way that he came in. That was the emphasis. And he came back in the power and might of the Holy Spirit and in his anointing and his purpose and destiny. And I saw, uh, I, I saw you taking a victory stance, kind of like Rocky Balboa with your, with your hands up. And it was you proclaiming the word of God, proclaiming the truth. And that as you were, the, 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 these swords were coming up out of your mouth and you were physically doing it. You weren't doing it in your mind. You weren't doing it in your heart. You were physically speaking out and proclaiming the word of God. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And I, and I saw you taking that victory stance and doing that. And that he, Jesus is giving you encouragement. He works all things together for good that love him and that are called according to his purposes. Yeah, and the second one was this, is that uh, you have this covenant relationship like Jacob. And it was specifically like, like Jacob, where everything that you set your hands to do is blessed and prospers. And this is what the Bible says about Jacob, that this is Jacob, a generation of those who seek your face. And that as you seek Jesus' face, especially in this time of this wilderness, and if there's anybody else out there feeling like you're in the wilderness, this is what he's encouraging you to do, to keep your eyes on Jesus and seek his face. And that out of that, you wouldn't be struggling and striving, Matthew, 
uh, for your businesses, for your marriage, for your family, for these, for these things, for finances. No struggling and no striving. It'd be seeking after his face. And out of that covenant relationship would, would simply come and, and flow out this, this anointing. And you're bringing your king, God's kingdom, not your kingdom, God's kingdom into your own life, your marriage, your home, your family, and into the businesses. God's kingdom coming. Amen. Matthew, the mighty son of God, I saw in worship you were um, standing in gold armor, and I, it looked like Jesus, it might have been an angel, but someone came up with like a um, chemical-based sponge and was rubbing all the armor, like polishing your armor, and uh, I believe that what the Lord was saying was that um, he, it, this, it was like an acidic kind of um, chemical that he was putting on it, cleaning it, getting debris or, you know, battle damage off and I heard the Lord say uh, what feels painful is making you beautiful and you're coming into a season just like everyone is saying it's a, it's an increase it's a promotion it's for you it's for your family it's for your kids and your kids kids and I just remind you that you are laboring in an eternal kingdom and you are bearing fruit for generations to come not just yourself in Jesus name amen Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Sorry. We have some gifts for them as well. The bag is for Pastor Matthew because I don't think he wants flowers. So here's Rachel's. And we have to take your gift back. You can't hang on to it right now, but you can open it right now. <laughs> There's a lot of it in there. <laughs> it's just bacon. <laughs> So we have to put that back in the fridge. <laughs> so thank you, you guys. We love you so much. Hello, church family. Welcome to the Well Grand Rapids. I'm Ashley Lewis here to give you your morning announcements. Fire starters, get out of here, go, but don't run. Please walk and go have fun. <laughs> Those that serve and attend the Well are encouraged to attend a CPR class on November 7th from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. to learn from a certified instructor. While childcare is not provided, children that will not distract from the learning experience are welcome to attend. Please make sure to RSVP. This just in, we have a new podcast. It's called Moments with the One. They're short clips from our Sunday services to bring you deeper into the presence of God. You can access this podcast from anywhere you get podcasts at. iTunes, Spotify, you pick. We are starting up small groups. We want these to be a space to establish real authentic relationships. We know what it feels like to come to church and feel like an outsider looking in. What would it look like if I loved who I was created to be? Sign up is easy. Just go to our app, website, or the bridge. Currently, we have four small groups to choose from. A women's group that focuses on Pastor Kathy's book, Shatter Shame, which is hosted by Rose David. And we have another one that is a men's group that's hosted by Ralph David. So, you know, boys can go their way, girls can go their way. Do your thing, dogs. There is also an art-focused small group, so if you are an artist, painter, drawer, singer, songwriter, anything, any sort of creative, we want you to join this group. It's hosted by the Hamiltons, so come on over, get creative. And last but not least, there is also a singles group, so all you single people out there, it's time to find your spout. Uh, the Holy Spirit together as a group as a group of singles. It's gonna be so much fun So that group is hosted by Josh and Bethany Lee Now continuing the all-in series, please stand and welcome Pastor Matthew All right. Good morning everybody you can be seated Thank you so much for all the bacon. I said it last time I preached, I think, the quickest way to my heart was bacon. So thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, we're going to, what time is it, 11.35? Might switch it up a little bit here. Give me a second, I'm going to think. All right. 
Thank you for all the words and encouragement. Uh, Josh, thank you so much for that about the, the testing. That's definitely the season that I felt like I've been in. If any of you uh, do not know, I own a restaurant, so you can just let your imagination go on how that is running right now. Uh, with uh, all of the excitement that is taking place in 2020. It has definitely posed a lot of challenges, but at the same time, um, there's going to be a lot of new growth opportunities at the other end of this thing. A lot of uh, what I'm excited about, the very beginning of this season, um, I had actually talked about the, uh, the release of creativity that was going to take place as a result of 2020. And I really truly believe that there is businesses and the businesses in here that have had to adapt and had to change uh, their business model as a result of COVID. And, as, and what's going to happen as we go through on the other side, that business is going to stay as our old business comes back, which is we're actually going to get our payback in 2021. There's going to be more that comes back as a result because we've, we've like, for example, for me, we've all of a sudden shifted into a takeout focus. And it's a takeout business that we never had. I don't think it's going to go away when we start, when we reopen to full capacity in the dining rooms as well. So what looks like a hardship is a blessing in disguise. And I think that you can take that for every area of your life for this year. That as a result of, of the, you know, the first way that, that God actually, rep, actually spoke in who he was in the Bible was actually as Elohim. He said that he was the creator. And us being made in his image are called to be a creative people. And I really believe that there's a, a new true expression of who God is as creator that has taken place as a result of this season. Like we had to get creative just how to live in quarantine, right? It was crazy. But we had to get creative. We had to get creative on what it looks like to go to work. We had to get creative on what it looks like to do church. We had to get creative in all different aspects of what life looks like. And I believe that as a result, we're, all we're doing is we're displaying more and more of the nature of who God is. What the devil meant for bad, the Lord is turning around for a good thing. And people get to see who the Father truly is as Elohim, as the one who creates. So I'm excited about that for this year. I will not say I'm excited for this year, but I'm excited about that for this year. Um, so I'm going to talk about covenant this morning. I wanted to make sure that that's what I was talking about. I had to read that behind. Okay, so we are talking about covenant this morning. Um, we're going to get into this real briefly. We've got a little over 20 minutes left. Is there something I really want to, I want to get out this morning? So um, I know that many of us throughout this year, it's honestly, it's felt a little bit like, like uh, you know in the old movies where, or probably new movies also, where they're traveling through space and they enter into a meteor shower. And there's quick dodging of all the meteors that are coming our way. You know, there's the different orders and the different things that are taking place this year that we have to dodge very quickly, pivot really quickly. And we're, we're, we're in general successful, but every once in a while we hit a meteor. And we're, we're making the, uh, a lot of decisions very quickly. You know, for myself and my business and my restaurant, the big decisions that we used to make is like, we're going to roll out a menu. Should we do turkey or ham on that sandwich? You know, now it's, it's, it's things like, oh, we have to figure out how to increase our dining room capacity. We have to figure out massive decisions. Let's completely reinvent our business model. And so for myself, I'm just in a transparent way, my biggest uh, weariness of this, of this season is decision fatigue. It's just making the right decision over and over again in an instant. Not like we, have, we get time to plan these things out, but as a result of this season, there is just decision fatigue. We have to make these massive decisions that not only affect our lives, but affect the lives of those that are around us. And each and every one of us has had to make these decisions over and over and over again. You know, what, what are we believing about this virus? What, is, what, you know, what does it look like to live in this time? How am I acting? How am I responding? We have to make massive Massive decisions over and over again as if we're going through a meteor shower and trying to dodge those. Now, there's those that have been attached to us in life that are going through that meteor shower with us. They went into this season with us. And for the most part, I would say that we could probably look at our friends and our family and say, good job, you've, you've, you've dodged all the big ones. But every once in a while, they happen to make a decision that impacted them negatively. And if we're not careful of this season, we forget the person that went into the meteor shower and we take them at their worst moment in the midst of it. Thanks, Becca. 
Now, Jesus himself, he, you know, he was dealing with the Pharisees, and Jesus is, is performing all of these miracles. He's doing these mighty acts for the kingdom. He's advancing the kingdom here upon this earth. He's displaying what it looks like to be who we are called to be, to be a Christian here upon the earth as one that is bringing heaven to earth. And there are all these, these Pharisees that are around him, and they're wanting to stone him as a result of not doing everything the way that they wanted him to do things. And he actually says this in response to them at one point in John chapter 10, verses 31 and 32. He says, then the Jews took up, took up stones against, <laughs> whoo, some people grabbed some stones and were looking his way, ready to hit him with them. Jesus then answered them and said, many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? For which of these mighty things that I have done leading up into this season that, that you think I didn't do the right decision in, which one of these stones do you, or which one of these works do you stone me for? And if we're not careful, we can find ourselves on the side of the Pharisees looking at the decisions of our friends and our families. And if they're not lining up with the way that we think that they should respond to things, we're picking up stones, ready to launch them. This is why I believe that now, maybe more than ever, renewing of covenant is vital. I believe if we're going to be all in in the kingdom, then we need to come out of this season with the people that actually helped bring us into this season. We need to come out of this season latched arm in arm with those that were there to pick us up before we ever entered into this season. We need to renew the covenant with those that are around us and say that I will not leave you and I will not forsake you no matter what. And why? Why is that? You know, each and every one of us, we've, we're, we've give, been given a relationship with Jesus and and, you know, when things are tough, we can say things like, well, Jesus is all I've got. And, and so why do I need covenant with people? Well, let's, let's think about this. In Ephesians chapter 5, actually, let's, let's talk about marriage for a second. And then we're going to get into to a couple other things. I'm going to try to go fast, but if we're here a little longer, we'll be okay. we got nothing better to do right now than to glorify Jesus. So, uh so Ephesians chapter 5 is actually this, this scripture that talks about marriage and what it looks like for a married couple to live with one another. Um, let's, let's actually turn our Bibles to it real quick. Chapter 5, verse 22 says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. So wives are actually supposed to be a representation in a marriage of what it looks like for the church to lay their life down for the husband. But then likewise, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. And then here's kind of the summary of this. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ. And the church. Therefore, husbands love your wives and uh, wives respect your husbands. But he's actually saying, your marriage, what I am speaking to is I am speaking to Christ in the church. So oftentimes we can, especially I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak to you single people for a second here, but we can go and we can think that marriage is the goal to solve all of our issues. It is the thing that is actually meant to fulfill everything that we have within our life. Maybe we, we long for a partner, whatever that looks like. But I'd like to suggest at the very core and the purpose and intention of marriage is to display what it looks like for Christ in the church. The relationship that a husband has with the wife and that the wife has with the husband is actually meant first and foremost to be a display of us and Jesus. 
lived out. So if that's what it's like in marriage, then what is it supposed to be like in our relationships with one another? Because we know that covenant doesn't only take place in marriage. But covenant actually can take place in relationships that we have with one another. So outside of marriage, covenant looks like being the healthy body of Christ. See, when we enter into covenant with one another, we actually recognize through Jesus that we have now come into the body of Christ. And a covenant is something that is not meant to be broken, no matter what. Because the covenant of our, of, of our body, we, when things don't go right with our hand, we don't just chop it off. We don't just get rid of it. But we actually run to it. We actually try to nurture it. We do what we can to make sure that, 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 uh, that the uh, hand can actually live, that it can function correctly. You know, I, I, at the beginning of this year, I had a, uh, a little back injury. I was just looking back through some videos after my surgery. It was really funny and comical to, to, to think back on. I thought, I was laughing. I was like, man, I thought a little back procedure was the, was the low point of 2020. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, <laughs> that was great. I, honestly, it was just like a vacation in the hospital. It wasn't a big deal compared to what was coming. So, uh, um, but as a result of the injury that took place on my back, I actually had to adjust my lifestyle. Because I knew that in order for me to function, my back had to be healed. And so I needed to adjust what it looked like for my relationship with my back. And in the same way, our covenants are played out with one another. That if, we, if, there's, if there's somebody hurting in the relationship, if there's somebody that's, that's not doing well in the covenant, if we're not doing well in the covenant, if we're not doing well in relationship, then we actually may have to adjust for a season. We may have to adjust what that relationship looks like. We may have to, to, what seems like we're pulling apart, but we're actually readjusting for the purpose of getting closer together. And if we're not careful in this season with, with the amount of hurt and the amount of pain, we could, we could mistake in the, the, we could forget the fact that we're in this thing as a covenant. And so in order to avoid pain, we just leave. In order to avoid pain, we actually just take off. But because covenant is at the core of Christianity, because covenant is actually what we have entered into with Jesus, and because we've entered into covenant with Jesus, we've entered into covenant with his body, then it it gives a different sort of perspective on the hard conversations that we have to have. It gives a different perspective on the difficult decisions that we have to make, knowing that the goal is never separation. The goal is always connection. The goal is always a bringing together. The goal is always for the body to be healed and to be healthy. So though we may have to adjust what it looks like for a season, the health is supposed to come together so that the covenant can remain. Are you following me? So let's think about this. Ruth and, uh, Ruth and Naomi. We know that uh, Ruth was married to Naomi's son. And Ruth and uh, her sister-in-law, I guess it would have been, both of, both of Naomi's children died. Both of her sons died. And it was a moment of catastrophe, right, for the family. Can you imagine a mother not only lost one son, but two sons? And, and one of the, Naomi then says to the two daughter-in-laws, she says, uh, to her, she says, you know, you know what? My son is dead, so you, you, don't, you don't have to stay with me any longer. And so she says, you can go and you can go on your way. And so that daughter-in-law says, okay, that's fine. And she goes back on her own way. And then she says to Ruth, she says the same thing. And Ruth says, no, I am not going to leave you. Where you go, I will go. Because she understood that when she made a covenant to a person, she made a covenant to a family. And Ruth decided that it was more important to stick to the covenant than it was to go and look out for herself. Now imagine how devastating that this could be. She would probably, the the natural mind would be, let me just go and grieve and then I can go and I can find another husband and I can go on my way. I can continue on with life. But instead she decided to take the hard road and have a constant reminder of the tragedy that she just went through. She decided to actually cleave to Naomi instead of leave Naomi. She decided to draw in in the middle of catastrophe instead of run away in the middle of catastrophe. And as a result, she, you, we, we know the story. If you don't, I'd, I'd recommend you reading Ruth uh, later today, maybe. And, uh, and she, she goes and she finds this, this gentleman, a family member of Naomi, named Boaz. And she goes and she uh, ends up getting married to Boaz and they have a son. His name is Obed. And then Obed has a son and his name is Jesse. And then Jesse has a son, and his name is David. 
And then throughout generations and generations and generations and generations to come, we know that Jesus Christ is born among the lineage of David. Actually, on both sides, through both Solomon and Nathaniel, both lead down to Jesus, to Joseph, and to Mary. And this is one decision that a person made in the middle of a tragedy to stick close, to not break covenant, that actually entered her into the lineage of Jesus Christ himself. You see, I'd like to propose we do not know what the future actually has to bring for for us. We don't know what's right around the corner. We had no clue that this year was going to pan out the way that it was going to pan out. And we also don't know what the decisions to stick to family and to stick it out during the middle of the hardest season of our lives, what kind of greatness that that is going to birth in generations to come. Like I am living my life as a faithful son in order for my kids to be passed on blessings from me. I am, I, we oftentimes in North America, we think about our children and the legacy that we want to leave with them. And we, we immediately think about our 401k or we think about our, our, our trust fund or our estate planning. And, and we, we do all these things in the natural so that we can leave a legacy for our kids. We hope to have a son so that our last name could continue to carry on. And we think of legacy in a natural sense. But in the same way that we see that there are generational curses that are passed down through families, where it seems like a family just can't break out of fear or separations or or whatever it is, I believe in the same way that that blessing from from my bloodline can pass into my family's bloodline so that the spiritual heritage of my family is great. You know, I want the I want my family to be blessed for the legacy to go forth as a faithful steward of what God told me to do today. And we have absolutely no idea how far our seed can go. We have absolutely no idea what sort of blessing is generations in the future because of the yes that we say today. Now, I know it can be extremely difficult sticking with people. It can be extremely difficult because, (laughs) unfortunately, we don't get to control other people's decisions. Life would be much easier if we could all just control everybody else, wouldn't it? But unfortunately, we, we, don't, we don't get that luxury here in this life. And because of that, we then have to understand that covenant is the foundation of why we're doing what we're doing. And covenant, the goal is for it to remain. The goal is for it to stay connected. And so we know that we can go into the difficult conversations with that as the foundation, with that as the, the bedrock, so to speak, on why we're fighting for relationships. David was... Uh, David was just a, a young man. He was out in the field, and he was the youngest in his family, and they sent him out to take care of sheep. You know, he, was, he, was, he was kind of the afterthought, so to speak. And, uh, and David would spend his days out there just worshiping the Lord, taking care of the flock, being a faithful steward for the sheep that he had been given. Day in and day out, he honed his skill to being able to protect those sheep, so that when a bear or a lion came, he went after them. He wouldn't allow them to get in the way of, of, of what he was given as his mission in his life. And for him, it, it seems like for, from the way that we read scripture, that for him, that was satisfying enough for him, is the fact that he was just a faithful steward with what it was that he was, had been given. Well, we know that the Lord then told Samuel to go and to, to anoint a new king over Israel. He says, go to the house of Jesse. And so he goes and, and Samuel, and he, he starts going down the line of all the kids, all the sons in the family. And surely this is the one that we're going to anoint king. And the Lord says, that's not him. Next. Surely this is the one. No, that's not the one. Next. Surely this is the one that we're going to anoint king. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, that's not the one that we're anointing king. Well, all my sons are here. Oh, that's right. There's the one that's the faithful one that's, that worships you all day. There's the faithful one that's, that's, that wasn't looking for the limelight that's out in the field. There's a faithful one that didn't try to claw his way to the top and to be recognized by, the, by his brothers, to be recognized by his family. That just was a good steward over the, the very task that he was gives, given in that season. He's out in the field. Let me go grab him. And he brings David before Samuel. He says, this is the one that, that you are to anoint. And so we know that Samuel anoints David as the king over Israel. And it says that from that day forward, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Well then, I don't know about you, but for myself, when I've had these encounters, when I've had these experiences with the Lord, then 
my natural mind is to try to figure out the quickest way to get to that position then. Like the Lord says that, that you're a business owner, so I take out the business loan tomorrow. You know, that's, that's, that's the way that I at least attempt to work in this life. Let's do it fast and let's do it quick. Let's, let's get it done. But David took a different route. You see, David, he was actually called then after this moment where he was anointed king. He knew in his heart, he had this experience. He went from no Holy Spirit to filled with the Holy Spirit. He's had a very tangible change that has taken place in his life. And he's, he's then called to come to the palace, to come and to, to play his guitar before Saul. And now any of us, if, if this was the experience that we had, maybe we're, you know, we're going to the prophetic conference. <laughs> this is my time. This is my opportunity where they're all going to know what was rightfully my position. There's a little chuckles because I know we've all done it. Call me out so I can stand in front of all my friends and let them see how great I truly am. <laughs> and David's brought into the, to play before Saul. And can you imagine? David was just given this encounter. He is now filled with the Spirit of God has been anointed as king, and he is called to serve the king. Now, he could have gone in there, I'm sure, on the, on the journey, heading down the road, and be like, he's probably going to trip and fall or something. He's no longer going to be able to be king. This is my day. I'm going to go take what's rightfully mine. If that doesn't work, then maybe I'll just kill the guy. Whatever he's doing, he's in my spot. But instead, he took the road to actually serve Saul. He took the road to be a faithful servant. And then we know the story, it just can, it continues, it continues, and he ends up killing Goliath. Saul gets jealous of him. Saul actually goes out to, to kill David. He tries to take him out. And David, throughout all of this, throughout the bad decisions that have been happening to him, decides to continue to be faithful and to continue to be a man of covenant. He's been given opportunity after opportunity to take out Saul. And he says, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. I will not go and take what is not rightfully mine if the Lord hasn't actually given it to me yet. And so he continues to, to live his life, and he ends up finding uh, Jonathan. You see, David had been called into a position, but he hadn't been covenanted. 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 We're going to go with covenanted into that position yet. Each and every one of us have an individual calling, but I believe we're not actually going to get there outside of covenant. Ruth had absolutely no idea the magnitude of the calling that she was going to walk into as a result of sticking with Naomi. Had she gone on her own, maybe she would have had a happy life with another family. But because she decided to stick with covenant, she was able to give birth to a legacy that led to Jesus Christ. To a legacy that led to David, another covenant person. See, I believe that as we choose covenant in this generation, that covenant choices will continue to carry down for generations to come. David was also a man of covenant. He then found a person that, created, that he was able to go into covenant with. Jonathan, the rightful son, the heir to the throne, actually gave up his right to the throne and handed it to David. See, David had been called into, into the position, but hadn't had the covenant to get there yet. And through his faithful service, to Jonathan, his faithful service to the Lord, his faithful service to what it was that he was called to do, he eventually made his way to the throne. We don't understand oftentimes the decisions that we make and how they affect other people that are around us. We make decisions out of selfish motivations, thinking that we're doing it to protect ourselves, but to looking out for our own good. But my Bible shows examples of person after person after person after person that decided to stick to covenant and in turn birth legacies. It may feel like we're going through a meteor shower. Maybe the people in our lives aren't making smart decisions. Now is not the time to run. Now is not the time to leave. Now is not the time to bail out in, uh, on the people that help bring us into the season, on the people that if you look around in this room. Now is not the time to leave, but it's a time to cleave because we don't know what the other side of this season is going to look like. There could be a blessing that gets poured out upon the church that's greater than anything we've ever experienced before. And we feel like we're ready and we're anointed for the call, but we forgot the people that were supposed to help bring us there. We forgot the people and we left them in the meteor shower, not realizing that it was only through them that I was actually going to get to my throne. And then I want to flip this on the other way. 
What if your entire calling is to be a Jonathan? What if there are giftings and talents that you have been naturally given that are rightfully yours? What if your only purpose in life is to hand what is rightfully yours to somebody else? That's a tough one. Each and every one of us want to think of our destiny and our calling as this great grandiose thing. What's a greater call? Jesus said there's no greater love than this than to lay down your life for a friend. To actually live in a, heart, in, a, in a way of love, in the way of Christ, the way that he did it. Him is our example. He could have taken at the very moment the devil says to him, look at all of this kingdom. You can at an instant bow to me and you can have it all. But he decided to lay his life down for a friend so that we could be glorified. See, the interesting thing about covenant is that it does not seek itself. The interesting thing about covenant is that you don't get to go into it with your own ambitions. You don't get to go into it with your own motivations. In the same way for a marriage to work, the same way is that a covenantal relationship with one another has to work. You can't go into it with what you want to happen, but it's only to what the Lord wants to happen. And so our success has been put over and over again in this life. The only thing that counts us as successful when we, when we march before the judgment seat on that day when we get to go be with Jesus is that whether or not we are faithful with who he has given us and what we were called to do. Are we faithful on a day-to-day -day basis or are we looking to claw our way to the top? Are we looking to claw our way to self-gratitude and, and, and greatness in our own eyes or in the perspective of this world? I think it would be a greater thing to say, look, Lord, I gave up my life for my friends. The gifts and the talents that you would give me, I used them, and I used them to make other people great in my life. What would it look like if we as a people, if we as we a, as a church, actually looked out for the interests of others to make this nation, <laughs> to make this nation great? in a way that was selfless, in a way that was led with love, in a way that actually glorified those that are around us and not sought out our own self-interest, that actually drew closer to people in the midst of diversity and not just pushed them away because their decisions don't fit with our agenda. What could this actually look like if Christians, if we as believers, if we have the, as the body would stay unified, through the middle of this season. and Put down our weapons and stop turning them towards one another. If we recognize that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, the people that are at, 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 are at odds with us are not our enemy. The political leaders that we don't agree with are not our enemy. Do you know that Joe Biden is fearfully and wonderfully made? Do you know that Donald Trump is the beloved? Do you know that Nancy Pelosi, that the Lord actually knows every hair on her head like the sand on the seashore? Do you know that Mitch McConnell was actually thought of, that he was actually formed in his mother's womb? People are not our enemy. People are not our enemy. And as the church, if we can truly recognize that, I believe then we can approach those that do disagree with us, that maybe are in deception, that maybe are feeling, that are, that, that are being harassed by the devil in a way that we understand they're just being harassed by the devil. They just don't maybe know who they are yet. They don't realize the keys of the kingdom belong to them, that there's a free gift of salvation that's ready and available for them to go so that they can walk in the greatest calling that they've ever experienced before, so that they can be restored to the Father, so that they can actually be one of us that just says that it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. When we can look at people through the eyes of love, it's gonna transform the way that we approach all the, the issues of this life. It's going to totally transform the way that we look at, at, at the, the broken ways of this world. That's what people are fighting against. It's the ways of this world, not of the ways of heaven. The ways of heaven are perfect. And if we can truly see people through eyes of love, and I'm not saying that there aren't people that are definitely out for the destruction of this world, but that are being demonically influenced. It's important to remember that it is a demonic influence and not the person itself. Each and every individual is a precious child of God. 
And when we recognize that the goal is to get into covenant with them, that, that the word of reconciliation was actually given to us, that we're actually not to impute the trespasses of one another against them, but we have been given this word of reconciliation that they would be restored to the Father, then it transforms the way that I come to the table. It changes the way that I relate to my brothers and sisters. It changes the way that I relate to my, to my parents, to my children. It changes the way that I relate to the, uh, the opposing political party. Because I know that I know that I know that I know that they are children of God. And right now what we need more than else is wisdom on how to stay in relationships with one another. There is so much division in this country right now. What we need is a voice of reason. We need real wisdom and real strategy on how to draw closer to people, not how to separate them. I understand we're, I don't even, don't even know how I was going here, but I understand we're three days, what are we, two, three days from an election? What's today's date, the first two days from an election? And it's important. It's, it's our right as individuals of this country. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor that we get to live in a country that we actually get to vote, that we get to put our values and we get to say, this is what we're standing for. How many of you know we are not voting only for a person? We are voting for the values that they carry and what it is that they're actually going to bring change. There's a, it's very difficult for many times for us as Christians because a person doesn't align with all of our Christian values. We are not voting for that. We are voting for what is actually can actually change that is going to bring forth what we believe as Christians the best outcome here in this country. And each and every one of us has to individually come to that conclusion. But I believe that it's important to remember that as we are to honor the king, we are to serve Jesus Christ. That at the end of the day, it is only him returning to this earth that is going to bring the final transformation that's needed. It is no person, it is no party, it is no ideal. It is only Jesus Christ. And he is coming back. And he's the king that we serve. So knowing that, we then don't need to divide ourselves from other people that, are, that we're actually called to live this life with. So whether you vote for the right or for the left, let's stay unified as a people. Let's speak a different message. Let's speak the message of love and the example that Jesus laid before us. I think each and every one of us are capable, capable of it as long as we can learn to lay our lives down for those that are around us. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for covenant. Thank you for your example of covenant. Thank you for your example of, of what it looks like to to live this life here and to, to actually die for those that are around us. Thank you that you have given us scripture as a tutor to be able to see over and over again people that made the right decision to stay in family, to stay in commitment, and the blessing that follows as a result. Father, I pray that we would be a people that wouldn't run in the middle of adversity. We may need to adjust how we approach the situation, but the goal is always connection. We need, may need to adjust on what it looks like so that there can be healing, but the goal is health and connection. So Lord, teach us to be a covenant people. Teach us to be those that can run this race with endurance, that will not forget the fact that we're doing it with each other. That maybe we've been called, Lord, individually into a, a function, but our identity is as the body of Christ. And so, Lord, let us find our identity in one another and in, in you as, as, as your body, Lord. Hold us together in this season. Remind us of the good things that those that maybe we're at odds with, in, with people right now, remind us of the good things that they had done. Let's focus on the positive things in this life, the positive attributes that you have given people. Help us to run this race, Lord. Help us to be found faithful. That's all we're looking for at the end of the day is we want us to come to the end of our days as a faithful son, as a faithful daughter that has done your will here upon the earth. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. What a good word. I'm gonna vote Fuller uh, twenty. 36, 2030, 20, what's that?
2036, Fort Fuller. All right, if this is... <laughs> If this is your first time, welcome. We've got the bridge in the back. Um, if We've got a gift if this is your first time so we can kind of greet you and get to know you. Am I forgetting something? Okay. Uh, ministry team, come on up. And uh, we're just thankful everybody's here. Pray that you'd be blessed. Have a great week. And uh, we'll see you next time.